Hello and welcome to a new YouTube tutorial by Peakboard. In our video today, we'd like to show you how to read out multiple tables from an SAP system and how to combine these together using a join in order to use them in a visualization. In the background, I've begun building a visualization that we will later use to display the data from our SAP tables. Besides the heading, this visualization is going to contain four text boxes that will show the names of the various spare parts and their inventory amounts. Additionally, the minimum quantity of these spare parts should be 1,000 pieces. Next, I'm going to start setting up my SAP tables as data sources. To do that, I'm going to click on Add Data Source under Data, and then on SAP. In the dialog that opens here, I'm going to enter the name of my data source. Since this is the MBEW data source, I'm going to name it MBEW. After that, I can get started with entering my general information, such as my client ID, my username and password, the language, and the readout interval. In my case, access is obtained via direct RFC, and after I've entered the query, I can load the columns of the table using load columns. Using preview, I can look at the contents of the table that I'm going to be working with later. With that, I'm done adding my first SAP table. In order to add my second table, the MACT table, I'm going to duplicate my existing table in order to preserve my general information, just changing the query to match. Now, I need to join my two tables together. For that, I'm going to create a data flow for which I'm going to set the MBW table as my base data, in which I'll call join MBW and MACT. In order to join the two tables, I'm going to click on join under add step and then simply select the join type since the data flow automatically recognizes that there's only one possible table and one possible key with which to join the tables. After the two tables are joined, I now also want to change the data type of the LBKUM column since it's currently displaying a string, but I want to be able to check later whether the inventory is over or under 1000. For that, I'm going to click on add step again. This time, however, I'll go to change column data type and select my LBKUM column and change the data type to number. And just like that, we've converted the two SAP tables into a usable format. The data flow now contains a table which displays the name as well as the inventory of our spare parts. We now want to integrate these into our visualization. For that, we're going to once again click on the relevant text boxes and name them so that I'll be able to address them using a script later. After that, I'm going to insert the name of each spare part for the titles and the inventory amounts for the text. I'm going to repeat this process for all of my text boxes, simply adjusting the rows of the table. Last, I'm going to create a script that will color the text boxes red or white, depending on the inventory amount. It'll be white when the amount is above 1000 and red when it's below 1000. This script should be executed whenever the data flow is executed, which is why I'm going to set it up as a refresh event. In my script, I'll check if the amount of the respective line of the data flow is under 1000. If this is the case, the text box will be colored red. Using else, I'm going to indicate what should happen if the amount is not under, but over 1000. Then, the text field should be colored white. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process for all of my text boxes while adjusting the relevant line in my table for each one. With that, I'm finished with my visualization. Using Preview, I can start the visualization and immediately see, as soon as the data is loaded, that one of the inventory amounts is below 1000 since the box is red. That's it for my video today. If you liked my video, I'd love it if you'd give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the video or any ideas about what we should talk about in our next video, please just write us a comment.